Uh, my name's Daniel Shimp. I'm, uh, I guess we'll say car builder from Maryland. Uh, these are my two cars, a 1.8T Swap Civic and a VR Swap mid-engine Acura Integra. <laughs> what? So this car started, and I can't stress this enough, as a joke. So the engine that was originally in this was actually a two liter uh, turbo, not a 2.0 T, but a two liter eight valve that I put a Nissan turbo onto um, in my Jetta. I drove it for about a year. It had reliability issues. I wasn't too happy with it. So I VR swapped the Jetta and I had the whole two liter trans turbo tune wiring, everything needed to put it into another car. I tried to sell it. No one wanted it because it's a two liter and they're worth like $50 when they work fine. Six months later, my coworker had this Civic that he'd blown the engine up in. It was a D16. This car has about 380, 400,000 miles on it, the body. It was just trash. He was about to scrap it. And literally one morning before we started working, he was like, what are you doing with your engine? And I was like, nothing, I'm about to scrap it. And I was like, what are you doing with your Civic? He was like, nothing, I'm about to scrap it. And at the same time, we were both like, you know what? would make people really mad would be to stick a two liter engine in an EK Civic, arguably one of the heroes of the Honda world. Um, so it was a complete joke build. Like I didn't mean anything of it. It wasn't serious. It was just, I had parts and then I was given parts and it just happened. It has a 1.8 T in it now because I got tired of the 2.0 reliability and lack of tuning options. And I came across one of the KO4 for like 600 bucks, swapped it in in about three weeks and drove it straight to H2O Ocean City the day after I was finished the swap. <laughs> it was literally like Thursday, like I, I got it running perfectly. And I was like, I'm headed out. You know what test drive? I'm like, this is gonna be, the, this is the test drive. <laughs> just driving it straight to Ocean City is the test drive. <laughs> so obviously a Volkswagen engine won't just drop into a Honda. One of the main issues I had putting this engine in here was the fact that Honda's, the exhaust goes out the front. Whereas obviously almost any other engine, it goes out the back. So whereas I have a lot of room up front, I actually didn't have that much in the back to the point where I even had to cut the subframe out a little bit to even be able to install this downpipe. I could have switched to an EG subframe, but I didn't want to take the bolt out because again, this chassis has almost 400,000 miles at this point. So the bolts didn't want to ever come out. <laughs> it's, there's probably maybe a half inch if that clearance between the transmission and the steering rack. As far as the motor mounts go, it is a factory Honda mount on this side with a custom bracket that mates it to the Volkswagen transmission. Uh, on this side, it is a stock Mark IV motor mount that is welded or bolted to a plate that's been welded to the frame of the Civic. It does enter the fender liner a little bit, but not a big deal. As far as mods, um, it does have a KO4. It's not a true whatever KO4, it's a knockoff KO4, but it is still definitely an upgrade. Basically just bolt-ons on a KO4. But in a Civic, that's a lot. So <laughs> it's of a thousand pounds less than the car it came out of. So it's, it definitely gets down, it's definitely fun. <laughs> yeah, the second you the second you put them on the throttle, it just starts spinning. It, it needs an LSD so badly. The, so the entire car has been converted to a Volkswagen wiring harness. There's a Volkswagen fuel tank in the trunk. Um, turn signals, literally every single thing. The low coolant temp. Power steering, every single thing, as far as the electronics are concerned, they're in a Mark IV. Basically, just the chassis itself is what's Honda and everything else has been Volkswagen. There is not a single scrap of Honda wiring in this car besides what went to maybe the sunroof because I just didn't take it out. Maybe about this much of the connectors from the headlights and taillights. But aside, <laughs> but aside from that, every single thing is a Volkswagen. The entire car, as far as it's concerned, is a Mark IV. 205 Dunlops up front, try to keep the power down. Again, it, it honestly needs an LSD. I'm not trying to talk the car up. I mean, I literally have traction issues all the way through thirds, <laughs> sometimes even fourth. Kind of partially shaved the engine bay. I obviously re removed the battery from there, the factory Mark IV coolant balls there. Um, to make the clutch work, all I did was, this is the stock clutch uh, reservoir for the Honda. 
clutches work as long as they have fluid. So I literally just plugged it right into the Mark IV. Um, I did have to make obviously custom brackets. So it's got a Mark IV clutch pedal and a Mark IV gas pedal. Brake pedal is still Honda. I reworked and shaved the distribution block for this is now in the fender along with all the other wiring for the car, the main battery fuse. They're all actually right on the other side of this fender protected by a plate. That's what kind of gives this kind of shaved clean look. Yeah, it's a custom 1.8T intercooler setup, um, which is loose apparently. <laughs> so yes, I literally had to make axles. So Volkswagen axles factory are hollow. They're the hollow tubes. Most aftermarkets are solo, solid as well as Honda axles. So, so I literally just took the, Honda, the Volkswagen axle and the Honda axle, slid them together, used a three quarter inch pipe fitting from Home Depot for $3 welded it to the end of one, slid it in, slid it over the other thing, and then welded it together. And that has been working for about 9,000 miles. So many burnouts, so many launches, so many everything like this. This car's lived a kind of rough life, but yeah, I literally just welded axles together for $10 to get the car running, but then this, they just kind of didn't fail. When I went 1.8T, I could have switched to an AWG or whatever the Audi one is, which will put the throttle body here. Rather than changing all this stuff, I just circle cut a five inch hole right here <laughs> and called it a day. <laughs> yeah, looks like cluster, looks like ignition, everything. How did you like fab that and make it look so good? What do you mean? Like, how does it sit in there like Two that? zip ties. <laughs> Again? <laughs> It's literally just two zip ties. Dude, it looks so good though. <laughs> it's so, it's so, it's so crazy. No check engine light. Everything is working fine. But you have every other light. I don't care. I got, I, there's no, the brake pad light is on because I have no brake pads, the ABS, because this car will never have analog brakes. <laughs> airbags, come on, this car has no airbags. You, we, we die like real men. <laughs> yeah it's it's and again obviously it was a joke build putting the 2.0 in there and then next thing you know i'm putting a 1.8 t in it because i want more power so, <laughs> so the inspiration for this build was i was already going to do it um the plan was in a little notebook somewhere is me writing down to make a mid-engine rx7 fc seeing as i'd already done the honda volkswagen hybrid I was like, well, what can I do possibly to kind of match that thing? And I went up on a Integra. I bought this Integra for 550 bucks. I sold the engine for $500. So I essentially bought this car for $50. <laughs> so it kind of circles back to free car, free engine. Um, I did have to buy, um, I wound up buying a donor Jetta. Got the engine, I needed the harness, I needed everything to put it in here. Um, but as far as building this car, I didn't plan on, I, I literally didn't plan on building it until after I'd already made my Civic no idea what I was doing and I mean that entirely I knew that I needed to put the engine in the middle of the car but that was about all I knew professionally how to do so I stripped the entire vehicle down got everything out the way so I did have to cut out significant portions of the Acura to even get it to fit in there I was kind of winging it obviously I tried to put as much weight in the front as I possibly could underneath this bumper is a giant bash bar that weighs like 70 something pounds so that this car doesn't turn into a Ford Pinto when I hit something in the front. <laughs> it seems super sketch that the fuel tank is up here, but there is a very reinforced bash bar on the other side of this bumper to where I'm not really worried about it, but I, it was basically just winging it much the same on my Civic. I just kind of went about it as problems came up and learned. It was a learning experience kind of been like, I'm going to do this and we're gonna figure it out as we go. I basically just put the engine in there and just work backwards from there. So the first roadblock I, went, I ran into with putting the engine in there is the way the engine has to sit. I did have to widen the frame. I actually had to cut the frame out a little bit to even get the engine even in there. Um, I also found out that in order to get the transmission set far back enough, I had to cut out some more stuff. So basically, if you look back there, it's basically a strip of metal and everything else is cut out. Like I, I, I work backwards from there. Um, the other major hurdle with doing this is in order to run a full Mark IV wiring harness, which this car does, is I had to not modify the length of anything. 
Um, they all run CAN bus, they all run resistance and ohms and all sorts of other stuff. And if you literally lengthen a wire by like this much, the thing won't work. So I had to get a mid-engine configuration and a front wheel drive wiring harness to work by not changing anything, which did take quite a while to actually truly nail down and figure out. Um, as far as working on the engine, it's actually great because it's just sitting in the middle of a trunk and whatever you need to access, you can just access it. So, but as far as a major hurdle, actually getting the engine in there and making the wiring harness work was probably the biggest hurdle for this. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we're about to go for a drive. I would go in this, but um, unfortunately it develops some sort of issue, of course. Um, one of the jokes, whenever anyone's been talking about, you made a Honda unreliable, I'm like, ha, F you, but I'm like, uh, you're totally right. So um, there, there's some, so the EPC light is on, it's in limp mode, I don't know why. Uh, I, think, I, I think it's the coil pack. And of course the day I need this to work fine, it had a misfire, so it's got a misfire. And I wish we were having fun in this, but it is what it is, project car life. <laughs> Dude, that is so weird. My brain doesn't understand what's happening. That's a lot of cutting. Yeah, so yeah, it's, it's definitely a lot of cutting. I probably didn't need to do this, but it also makes it easier to work on it. Um, this is a schedule whatever structural steel bar that helps me kind of tie the rear end in. Um, this does look extremely thin, and it is, but there's actually a lot of steel on the bottom of this. Um, it's about triple shear, um, one eighth inch steel. So although it's weak up here, it's extremely strong on the bottom. Um, that's also where the torque mount goes for the bottom of the trans. There's also a secondary torque mount that goes on the front using Ford Crown Victoria bushings. What? <laughs> <laughs> um, this exhaust is off a Infiniti FX35. It was $17 from the junkyard. Um, it's a two and a half inlet, inlet with chrome tips. Again, 17 bucks. Um, yeah, I did have to cut this out quite significantly. There is basically no, like there's nothing really here, but that's the only way I get the transmission to go up there. Um, yeah, there is a torque mount. Um, it's a custom torque mount using a bushing off, I think a Jeep. at on top of the VF motor mounts, it, the engine does not move at all, um, which is pretty important because the shifter is actually mounted to the chassis of the car, which isn't probably recommended. Many people brought it up, but as long as the engine doesn't move, the shifting is fine. I designed this car to be able to accept the engine from the top. So this engine can be dropped in from the top. There's the spacing is good enough and everything else is good enough. So you can work on this in the driveway, which is where I worked on it. It does have power steering. Mark IV VRs have an auxiliary radiator cooler. It's about yay big. Um, I hooked it up to a Civic radiator, which was $30, and easily bolted up the side. Um, that coupled with the factory Acura Integra front radiator and a heater core, which does have he uh, operating heat. The total capacity of this is almost five gallons of coolant. So I'd rather have more coolant than less coolant, and to, overheating has never been an issue on this vehicle, <laughs> nor, and if it is, I'm doing something really wrong. <laughs> I, I cut the frame of the Civic, well, sorry, the Integra out, widened it, and then I added these um, structural steel bars. It's about a quarter inch wall thickness, welded to the strut, and the frame over there. So as far as, structural stability between this and the cage it's actually planted and then i made the motor mount brackets off this for our suspension wise i literally just took the shocks that should be in the front and put it in the back and then vice versa so as far as adapting the suspension that's all i've done is that does work and even on some 181 dollar coilovers that aren't even for this car i think they're for an accord um it handles very well <laughs> uh surprisingly but again that's i guess the joy of the mid-engine build and kind of why most supercars are like this because the handling is good Despite it being a minute in a car, if you wanted to daily this, again, you really could. Um, there's nothing stopping you from dailying a car like this.
Uh, the wiring harness sits under here. Uh, but these are all the connections. That's for whatever. I know this is for the gas pedal because I've dealt with many issues in this freaking blue wire. And I probably have to deal with it right now. But <laughs> um, as far as shifter, yeah, the only thing that's odd, I need, do need to adjust it, maybe move it back. It is kind of odd that it almost hits the freaking center console. <laughs> Then yeah, Mark IV steering wheel, Mark IV controls. It's the same as my Civic, Mark IV cluster. Everything, <laughs> everything works. Fuel cage, everything, coolant temp. Um, so the heat is provided on both the Acura and the Civic by a, using a home furnace rheostat, um, which essentially is what a blow motor resistor is. So it's just a switch where you turn it and that's the resistor. But it's just off on, it's simple stuff. It does have wipers, it does have coolant fans. It has a working sound system, some of which is from a Jetta, some of which is an Audi B7. So these scoops are functional. This scoop does go to a Civic radiator that's right about here. Um, again, the VRs have a, a factory radiator that's about this wide. VRs run kind of hot. With it being a mid-engine on new heat would be an issue. So I said, if it bolts up, it bolts up. I grab a $30 civic radiator bolted it in this position hooked it up to where the auxiliary cooler should be and that's it but this scoop does feed that radiator so in the event that something's going on really badly this is actually almost fully replaceable because i had an issue one time where that radiator was not getting any flow and this radiator alone was enough to cool the car so that's great the other scoop is to let air on um, the air filter and in the future will be the air water intercooler for the supercharger setup but that's later. I wanted to keep it Euro, so these are wheels off a uh, 2002 BMW 5 Series factory BBS uh, 16, and I'm rocking 205 profile tires. CRV front brakes um, and knuckles, you need to do that to do a five lug setup, which this is. Um, five lug setup with the spacer and the, uh, the BMW wheels, and in the back, so I have a CRV front knuckle up front and the Nissan Altima wheel bearings in the back. They're both five by one 14.3, so they both can use the same. Dude, how many, <laughs> what is this car? Is <laughs> so, so. The back is a complete, the bastardization. Um, <laughs> so starting from the wheel in, we have this BMW wheel that's mated, that's mated to the spacer that mates to a Nissan Altima rear rotor. That rear rotor is then mated to a Mark IV Jetta caliper. The reason I had to do this was because the Acura uses brake shoes to as a parking brake, whereas in order to run an axle, obviously I need to get rid of them. Um, had the Jetta, had the calipers, calipers are calipers as long as you bolt them on they'll work. Uh, that Nissan Altima rear wheel bearing is then mated to a, a half inch plate that's welded to the factory Integra trailing arm. And then you take a Nissan Altima axle, which is solid, same as the Civic, and then the Volkswagen, which is hollow, weld them together. And if it worked on the Civic for 10,000 miles, we'll assume it'll work on this for 10,000 miles as well. Um, but yeah, it's a hybrid Nissan Acura Volkswagen Tonda rear end. <laughs> the primary reason it has a roll cage is to make up the strength that was lost by cutting out the rear end. I would say it worked. Um, again, like one of the problems was like I cut the rear end like almost in half as far as what supports what. So yeah, the roll cage was a way to reintroduce strength to the back to help. Also, again, the rear end is not supposed to support an engine. So the roll cage is, isn't, it almost isn't there to keep me safe. It's really primarily to keep the strength back in the chassis from what I've cut out and what I've modified where I put the engine. You, you put an engine where the fuel tank would go, you need to put some place where the fuel tank is. So this is where the fuel tank needs to go. Um, it's a 15 gallon fuel tank. This is supposed to be a show car. It's supposed to go to places I don't want to have to refuel every 10 miles. The way the spacing works out is it's extremely close to the depth that the Mark IV fuel pump is. So that's the Mark IV fuel pump just bolted right to this uh, cheap fuel cell and then I relocated the fuel fill up. These radiator, this radiator is connected to the engine. Obviously it does go front to back. It helps save with coolant flow. It's a kind of a fail safe, I guess. I don't have to worry about coolant if I have a, two coolant pumps. Uh, exhaust clamp holds the fuel filter on. <laughs> this welded to the body. So when I first put the engine in there, one of my concerns was what the gear pattern was gonna be because I wasn't sure what would happen when you flip the gear pattern backwards. But since 
So the car runs a factory O2J and a factory uh, Mark IV um, shifter assembly. The shifter has been lengthened about 10 inches on one and about six inches on the other to make it work. But by flipping the engine backwards and then flipping the shifter backwards, what happens is you wind up with a normal gear pattern. And funny enough, it's completely normal, like as far as how you drive it. The only thing it, that can only catch is reverse is quite far over. Cables are stretched in kind of a way that they shouldn't have been. Basically it's first, reverse <laughs> but, but but first second third fourth it's it's a normal gear shift pattern which is it's nice because i don't have to think constantly while i'm driving it whether it's something stupid like all right now i'm in second now i'm in third <laughs> or something like that um this is painted a molio light yellow like a 337 or 20th anniversary much like the civics homage to a 90 uh, to a 96 harlequin um and it also went well with the whole idea of it being a type vr or type r which were yellow all together so it was type r's are yellow already let's paint it a volkswagen yellow most people don't literally don't even notice it's actually a volkswagen yellow it's, i've had so many people say that how dare you molest the, that type R. I'm like, ha, ah, that means I did a good job. That means you think it's actually a type R. The car you're looking at right now costs $3,000 to make. I mean, that's buying two vehicles, painting it, doing all the work myself. I'm not out here trying to kill the game, just throwing money at a car. I'm just trying to get a car on the road using minimal tools, minimal resources, and minimal money. As far as drivability, I, try, I haven't pushed this that much yet because A, it's a complete untested rear end. It's a Nissan, Volkswagen, and Honda rear end. I haven't tested yet. <laughs> what I completely cobbled together with no, with no engineering experience whatsoever, rear end is done. Um, it also doesn't lead itself to doing burnouts or drifting because it wants to grip because that's just what mid-engine cars do. That's like the whole point. I haven't really driven it that much. And whenever I think I'm at its limit, that's not what it actually is. I will huck it into a corner expecting it to drift, but it doesn't, it just grips. I'll launch expecting it to slip and it doesn't. I mean, this build's only been on the road for maybe two months driving. So this has a Volkswagen steering wheel on it because I went ahead and put a Volkswagen splined steering wheel, uh, whatever coupler over top of the Acura thing. I can use this steering wheel I already have and the column I already have and just pop it on there. So thanks to, thanks to the magic of welding, I just welded the splines onto the Acura column and that lets me run a Mark, uh, Mark IV GTS steering wheel, which is what I'm used to holding, I guess at this point. <laughs> Ultimately, these builds are just because I didn't care and I just wanted to do it. I wasn't, trying to, I wasn't really trying to prove anything. I wasn't really trying to show anyone up. I'm not trying to kill the dyno. I'm just building cars that I want to build because it's, it's fun for me. So I get a lot of feedback. People are like, you need to put a K20 in. You need to put a J swap. You need to, the, whatever, the B would make so much power. And I feel like they're getting too caught up on what other people tell you you should be doing with your car versus what you want to do with your car. Honda, the, the Honda people hate me more than the Volkswagen people hand down because the Volkswagen people love it because obviously it's the Harlequin and either 2.0 or 1.8 they love it. But the Honda people are always like, oh, it needs to be a K20 or a V6 swap. It needs to be this, it needs to be that. I'm like, I get it. But at the same time, like, who cares? I don't know, there's a dime a dozen K20 swap EKs. It's something interesting. If, if you're hating on something that's interesting, I don't know, it's, I guess that's on you. <laughs> I wasn't working here when I started these builds, but I got hired because of what I do. Um, because what this shop does is typically very high level swap, custom mod stuff, like literally you name it, we can probably do it. So check it out, it's with End Fabrication. It's where I work. Um, it's where your dreams can come true. <laughs> All right, thank you everybody for watching. Here is our fan of the week at Dusty Golf R on Instagram. Obviously, he has a really nice black Golf R with a few modifications done. It just looks overall really nice. If you would like a chance to be at the end of a video, just hashtag ShopDap on Instagram. Keep in mind though, if your profile is private, it's not gonna show up publicly on the hashtag. We always keep an eye on this hashtag and repost stuff on our Instagram as well. So tag us and hashtag ShopDap for a chance to be in the next video.